is this woman already, you know, making her own money and living the kind of lifestyle that, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times that, that, that that's yeah. the problem or that's part of the problem is that the woman's like, well, I'm, I'm already providing for myself uh, all these nice things. So why would I downgrade or why would I marry someone who can't at least match that level? So is she? Yeah. I mean, either way, what would answer both answer both ways for, for a woman who maybe, maybe she's um, maybe she hasn't gotten there yet. Maybe she's exiting the highway at like 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. You know what I mean? Which is young by today's standards, unfortunately, but like before she's really like made it in her career. And, but then you have other women that are older, maybe five or so years older that have really made it in their career by that point. I personally don't see them exiting from that highway. So, but we can talk, we can address them too. Let's start with a younger girl who has recognized ahead of time. She sees the train wreck up ahead. She sees the the pile up up ahead of women in their late thirties and forties that are ending up single and miserable and all this different stuff that we're hearing about. And she's like, I don't want to be that. And so let's say, let's say she's 30 and she's going to exit the highway and try and find a godly man. But everything inside her is telling her, you have to look up, look out for number one. Mm-hmm. You deserve better. And she's like, and she's questioning these ideas. And yet she still feels afraid putting her trust in a man for this reason. What would you say to that, to that girl? I would say the voices that we surround ourselves with are going to dictate how we think about these things. And Amen. Um, that if you want your mind renewed, you have to be actively putting in input (laughs) that is doing the renewing. And uh, now, unfortunately, I don't know the state of, I don't know what the average church is saying nowadays on that score. And I don't know how easy it is to find a social circle that, because even in my experience in reformed churches, I I've gotten some weird, weird stuff. But one of the first things would be, well, you need to renew your mind and one, yes, scripture and prayer, but also, you're going to believe what you're listening to and you need to stop listening to. I have, I have a, my best friend her She, she said her dad would always say, I'm praying that you smash the glass ceiling. I pray that you smash the glass ceiling. And he would say this for years. And she eventually said, dad, stop praying that. I don't want to do that. Pray that I find a husband. And mm-hmm. the, you know, and that was the right response with respect towards her father. Right. Um, like, <laughs> There's sometimes we have these voices and we have to silence them and, and uh, take every mm-hmm. thought captive. Again, I don't know how, that, how, how easy that is, but um, surround yourself with voices that are going to be renewing your mind. And also, like, I would appeal to that innate and intrinsic desire to be loved for who you are. And mm-hmm. um, just the, like the really simple beauty of like true love that you know can you know, i'm not saying disney movies right but like that the a little bit of a of maybe it, it seems fairy tale or idyllic but just a little bit of that you know appeal to that romance that she has in her heart as a woman of of wanting just to be loved for who she is and can you extend that to someone else because that mm. like i see this discrepancy this hypocrisy sometimes in the discussion where Women want to be just taken as they are. And, you know, it doesn't matter what I bring to the relationship or, you know, I, I shouldn't have to change anything about myself. You know, you know, mm-hmm. if I if I want to have a buzzed haircut and my man, you know, like he's going to love me for me, then it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. I can wear whatever I want, whatever. They want to be taken wholesale just as they are, but they don't want to extend that same to a man. And so I would gently say, Hey, is this something that you want for yourself where, you know, you want to be received on like, just for who you are? Are you willing to extend that? Are you willing to believe that it's possible and to vulnerably enter into that kind of love? That's beautiful. I mean, and to hear you say all these things um, is, is very encouraging because as, you know, as I've said, like, I carry a lot of these ideas, right? That like, evaluate it based on how much you can provide that the notion of being loved for who I am as a man, like why would, why, what? (laughs) That's not why women love men. 
And that's the manosphere. That's what the manosphere and the red pill tell guys. I mean, more the manosphere. The red pill is more about like spinning plates and stuff like that. So it's more about, you know, dates and casual sex. The manosphere at least tried to pretend like long-term relationships were an aspirational goal. But that's the, that's the ideas in that in that world is that you win by being, you know, in better shape and having more money than the other guy. And that's and that's it. And the notion this is this was the great flaw of the manosphere is that the notion of um it, it never dealt with men's emotions it, like we're not supposed to have them feelings are gay bro yeah. kind of like that and so so the idea that a man could want to be loved and want to be cared for just as a human being was like no that's not hard enough you know and it, it ultimately destroyed that whole world because that's not really who men are a great example is Aragorn. Like I'm, I've watched the, the Lord of the Rings movies probably once or twice, <laughs> you know, can't recall, but I'm reading the books right now. And I was, I've been very, I'm halfway through. Um, I'm into the taming of Smeagol and in, in, in the, in the two towers. Okay. And, but even to see, like, I thought that they would show um, that they, that Aragorn would be a little bit more unapproachable mm. in the books. But he's he's the same. He has the same doubts. His doubt manif- his doubts manifest differently, like in terms of like I've made a bunch of bad decisions, right? And he's clearly terrified of the of the Black Riders. You know, he's encountered them before, and so you see his human his human side. But he has emotions. Yeah, he does. And that was the th- yeah he does. Yeah, and that was always the thing that the Manosphere got wrong. Is it always tried to you know posit men as these unapproachable, untouchable, untouchable masters of the universe. 